No! 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 Damn it! Does this keep happening to you? Every time you're on the verge of making perfection, your item fractures? Well, I can't help you with that, but I can give you a full rundown and explain how crafting works in Last Epoch. Today, we're going to discuss everything in crafting in Last Epoch. We're going to discuss instability, shards, how it's all calculated, how you craft, what tiers mean, what exalted means, the difference between normal, magic, and rare item glyphs and ruins, and determining a good base and what's a good item that you should be crafting on or if it's something that you should just throw away and chatter for parts. Alright, let's get into it. So let's start with the very basics. What is crafting? Crafting in Last Epoch is where you find an item, gamble for an item, buy an item from a vendor, or in the future trade an item, and then you take that item and you put your own touch on it. You're going to take affixes or items, shards that you've found out in the open world that you've killed mobs for, and you're going to enhance the item that you have and make it better. So as you're going out in the field killing things, you'll eventually see some of these orangish, tannish color, maybe light brown, I don't know what color it is, but you'll see these shards drop on the ground and you pick them up and you'll notice in your inventory it's going to say a bunch of plus one shards. You'll see all of these shards and then you push the transfer crafting items and boom, all those items get sent to the forge. And that's where the crafting happens. So to access the forge, you can push F in game, or you can go to a forge location, which is in a few maps. It's in the end of time. It's in the council chambers. And there's a couple of maps that have a forge in it, but you can do it at any time, anywhere in the game. You push F and you open up the forge and you get this beautiful looking UI where you can do a bunch of different things. So just going over it real quick, you're going to have a spot for the piece of gear that you want to craft. You're going to have some glyphs, spots where you can enhance your items. You can either enhance your chance of success or you can enhance the chance of having a reduced amount of stability added to the item when you do a craft on it. You also have ruins where you can redo implicits, you can cleanse an item, take all the affixes off of it, you can break the item down for parts, a lot of different things you can do. And then of course you have the suffix side and you have a prefix side and an item can have two of each. So here in my inventory we have three different items. We have a normal item which has no affixes on it we have a magic item which is where it has either one or two affixes and we were have a rare item which has three or four affixes and then there's also exalted items which will be purple in color and they have a tier six or seven affix on them but we'll get into exalted items later for here let's start with the basics let's just take an item and put it in here instantly you'll see that you have two of these plus marks where you can add items now all of those affixes that just a few seconds ago we transferred to crafting materials we can now push this button and we're in the suffix side and all of a sudden all of the affixes that we've found show up and when we take these affixes we can pick from any of them and now add them to the item so depending on what your build is what it is you want to enhance you have hundreds of options and you can pick from them and choose anything and then craft exactly what it is you want on your item so for this item here let's go ahead and say we want to add in some cold resist now, we we'll can do it with glyphs to where we would have a 95% chance to upgrade. We could throw a glyph on to where we have a 100% chance because it gives us 25% more chance. Or we can use a stability glyph, which isn't going to give us an increased chance. But when we do an enchant, all enchants normally add 5 instability to an item. This will instead add anywhere from 2 to 5, so there's a chance for a reduced amount of stability to be added to the item. But what is instability, you ask? Instability, in short, is just the chance to break the item. So if you have 14 instability on an item and you go to craft with no mods and you're just doing tier 1 through tier 3 or something, you'd have a 14% chance to fracture on that craft. That's if you're not doing any guardians or using any other materials. The way that instability is calculated on an item, when an item drops, it takes the highest tier on that item. So say that you have a tier 5 and then 3 tier 3s on an item. So a total of tier 14, you add all those together, and that's what you would call a tier 14, because you have 5, 3, 3, and 3. And on this item, you have a tier 5, so your formula is the highest tier, plus all tiers added together, minus 5. So you would take that tier 5, so you have 5 plus all tiers added together, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 14, and 5 plus 14 would be 19, and then you minus 5, so you would have 14 all together. You would have 14 instability on this tier 14 item. 
What that would mean is you'd have an 86% chance of success on that item with the first to fix you did, except once you go from tier 3 to tier 4, which is all you have on that item, there'd be another 2% chance of not succeeding. But we'll get into that later. To dummy it down for you as simple as possible, a general rule of thumb is the more of fixes you have on an item, the more tier levels you have on an item, the higher the instability will be. But that instability is far lower than what it would be if you had crafted that item up to that point. So it's always better to find items with the highest amount of total tiers as possible that's still an item you're looking for with the affixes that you want and then craft on it. Most people come to me and say is it better to craft on magic items or on normal items or on rare items. And the truth is the higher tiers you get on an item when you first get it is going to be the best scenario possible because every tier that's added, for basically every tier that's added, there'll be one added instability to the item. And if you craft, you're likely to add five instability unless you use a glyph of stability and then you'll add between two and five. So it's always better to get as many tiers as possible on your starting item. All right, so let's do some crafting. Let's say that you found a normal item on the ground. It's got zero instability because, well, nothing dropped on it. There's nothing to formulate for it. So instability is, of course, zero. And now we're going to go ahead and throw on some cold damage. We have a 100% chance to succeed. Now, from tier zero to tier one, with the, the process of adding in a fix, the instability is the instability. So the zero instability is going to be your exact chance to upgrade. At zero instability, we have a 100% chance. Once we actually do an enchant, for every tier level, you actually have five less added to that instability. So an example of what I mean here is if I craft this, if I go for another tier one, you'll see I have a 95% chance to upgrade because we have five instability. So 100 minus five is 95% chance to upgrade. However, if we go from tier one to tier two, you'll see it drops down to 90, even though we have the same five instability. So every tier level actually increases another five until you get to tier three to tier four, which adds an additional two, and then tier four to tier five, which is an additional five. And I'll go ahead and show you what that means. So here, I'm gonna use some guardian so we can up our chance to make sure we get the craft. But we go to tier two, we have 10 instability. If I take off the guardian, you'll see we drop down to an 80% chance. We're already down to an 80% chance because we have 10 instability and we're going from tier 2 to tier 3, which is 2 levels up. So that's another 5 per the 2 levels for another 10. And 10 plus 10 is 20. So we throw that guardian back on. We go to tier 3. And this is where things change a little bit. You'll notice that even with the guardian on, we have this weird, it's no longer a multiple of 5 because there's an added 2. So if I take this off, we should normally, you would think, be at 70% now because we have 15 instability. There's three levels with five each level. That's 15. 15 plus 15 is 30. However, between tier three and going to tier four, there's an additional two flat added. Therefore, it's 30 plus that two, which makes it 32. So it actually is now harder in the game to go from tier three to tier four and tier four to tier five is even the hardest. And the reason they made this change recently was because they also changed that better items would be dropping. They said fewer items in game will drop and they'll have better bases, higher tiers. So you'll have a higher starting point. So here, if we go ahead and throw on a guardian and hopefully we succeed here. Okay, we made it to tier four. So now at tier four, if we want to go to tier five, we take this off. We have 20 because we're at tier four. So five per tier, that's 20 plus 20 and stability takes you down to 60. And then there's an additional five to go from tier four to tier five. So you can see that's that 55% chance. Of course, you could go down and add, you know, a tier zero to a tier one, add a new affix, and you're back up to an 80% chance because that's just based off your instability. And with a guardian, you could guarantee yourself that you would have another chance to succeed here. Now you cannot craft on exalted items, but tier 6 and tier 7 items are reflected the exact same as if they were tier 5. So when it comes to the instability on an item when it drops, for the formula sake, everything that's above tier 5 is formulated as if it was tier 5. So when you take that formula and you take the highest tier, even if it's tier 7, you only put a 5 into the formula. So exalted items get a bigger benefit because they already have a tier 6 or tier 7 affix, and it doesn't count against you any more than a normal tier 5 would. So exalted items are something you really want to craft on because they already have really good amounts of tiers on them and a really reduced amount of instability. 
exalted items are going to be the best items that you can craft on in the game for the most part there are obviously bad exalted items you still want a good base implicit you know the type of item that you want that works with your build but for crafting purposes exalted items are going to be the type of items you want to hunt down and craft on for your build all right now something you probably also notice is when we added this one affix our item went from being white to being blue because anything with one or two affixes is magic that's why it's blue. A normal item has no affixes and appears white or clear. And then if we put three affixes on here, it'll automatically become a rare item. So we're going to go ahead and throw on some elemental resist. And then we'll throw on some mana. And boom, you see it turned yellow. We now officially have a magic item. And of course, you can have up to two suffixes. And then, of course, up to two prefixes. We'll add one more. We'll go with critical strike multiplier. And boom, we now have the maximum amount of affixes that you can have on an item. At this point, you will have realized you have full control over what affixes are on the item and which ones you want to craft on. It is completely up to you to decide that and what benefits your build the most. A lot of people will come and they'll ask and they'll say, how do I know which affixes I should put on my gear? Well, I can't really answer that for you because I don't know what build it is that you're doing, what item slot you have, and there's not generally like one affix that's better than the rest. It really depends on what it is that you actually need. Just because I have cold resistance on my relic doesn't mean that you should have cold resistance on your relic. Maybe you already capped your resistance because you were running a different skill that had, you know, 75% cold resist inside of that skill when you used it for 4 seconds and you always use it, so you don't even need cold resistance to begin with. So questions like that is something that really are determined by what build you're running and not the piece of gear itself. Now let's go over what some of the ruins do. So there are several ruins in the game. We actually have five of them. Some are used more than others. We have the Ruin of Shaping, and this actually re-rolls all of the implicits on an item while leaving your affixes alone. So on this item, each of these affixes that we added in each tier level actually has a range that it can have. So on here, while we see we have 7 mana, 9% critical strike multiplier, those actually have a range that they can roll from. So our mana can actually be from 6 to 10, our critical strike multiplier could have been 7 to 9, but up above that, not the prefix, not the suffix, but up above where you see where it says 14% endurance up here at the top is actually a implicit. And implicits are something that we can reroll all by themselves. So like I have a pretty high rule here. I wouldn't want to reroll, but to show you what you would do, you just use one of these ruins of shaping and then boom, you can reroll it. I got 14% again. This does not touch the prefix or the suffixes. This only does the endurance. I'm going to do another one just... Hopefully it'll change. There, we got 13% now. Now, if you want to change your prefix and your suffixes, you cannot do them individually, but you can do them all at once. So if you have a really bad rule, it's recommended that I would always try and get that rule before adding another affix that might have a good rule on it. Otherwise, you might lose it. But either way, it's just best of luck, really. If we go down to here and we use a Ruin of Refinement, this re-rolls all the affix levels. So here you can see we have 7, 9, 25, and 5. If I use this, boom, we have 8, 7, 24, and 4. They all change. They all got a different number. And it's really as simple as that. So if you have some really bad rules, by pushing Control alt you can see your ranges. Now my ranges, for the most part, I would say, are more on the low side than the high side. So now I would want to re-roll. We actually went down with that last one. But if you have nothing but all minimums, it might be something you look into. Instead of getting one more tier on one of the items, maybe you should do a Ruin of Refinement and try and get higher percentages on all four of them. And then, of course, once you're done with an item, say you fractured it or you just don't need it anymore, or it's an item that you're not going to use but it has things on it, like you need cold resist, you have what we call the Ruin of Shattering. You can throw this on there, it'll break it down, and boom, all of the affixes on it anywhere from one to however many were on it. You usually don't get all of the ones that were on there, but you'll get a random amount of each affix, and it'll be random between all of the affixes. You won't get all of them. It's completely random how many of the affixes you'll get from it when you break it down, but all of those will automatically be added back into your forge, and then you can craft with them again. All right, and then to show you an exalted item, an exalted item is an item that has a tier six or tier seven rule that's above tier five. You can only craft up to tier five, but tier six and tier seven can drop, and then you can craft on the other affixes on that gear. 
and it is possible to have multiple tier 6s or tier 7s on an item, but they are extremely, extremely rare. So if I throw an exalted item in here, you'll automatically see that we have a tier 7 vitality, and then we have some necrotic, and we have two open slots. We can put on a suffix that we want, and we can put on a prefix. Now say that on this build, I do not want the necrotic resistance. I could risk using a ruin of removal which will randomly remove and affix on the item and here it would be a 50 50 chance on whether it removes the one i want or if it ruins removes my tier 7 vitality which i wouldn't want to do for me here if i really didn't need the necrotic resistance and i already had a good chest i would risk it and try and remove it however here i'm not going to risk it because i don't know what i want to use this chest for in the future and I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Now you can craft these other slots. However, you can't craft on the tier 7. If this was tier 6, I wouldn't be able to try and craft it up to tier 7. But the instability on this is calculated as if it was only tier 5. And that's why we only have 6 instability. As the formula is the highest tier plus all tier levels minus 5. And if you threw in 7, that would be 7 plus 8, 15 minus 5, which gives you 10. And you don't have 10 instability, you have 6. Because that 7 is really a 5. So you have 5 plus 5 plus 1, which is 11 minus the 5, which gives you the 6. So with that formula, you can see that you really benefit from having exalted gear. All right, and then the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with is a lot of questions about where the best spot to farm a fixes is, where should you farm for items, where should you farm for glyphs. Basically, all your farming is going to be done in the Monolith of Fate, and it doesn't matter which timeline. However, it is recommended you find a build that is capable of doing empowered content because at least getting into empowered level 100 areas is going to have the highest chance to give you items with the highest amount of tier levels on them, as well as the highest chance for those items to be exalted with tier 6 and tier 7 affixes. As well as tier 6 starts dropping at level 55, and tier 7 doesn't start dropping until level 90. So level 100 covers it all and gives you the highest chance to get the best items with the best bases for you to craft on. Another question that I get a lot is how do I know if an item is worth it to craft on? Well, for starters, if the item is just about or is as good as the item that you're wearing in that slot, you might as well try and craft on it in order to make it better because just a little bit better is better. If the item is going to take four or five crafts just to be the same as the one you have, it's probably not worth it to invest that much material into it unless you have a lot of resources. If you're playing solo self found and it requires four or more crafts to get that item to where it would be just as good as the one you're wearing, I probably wouldn't waste that material on it. I would wait for a better drop to come along and as you run maps more and more gear drops at an increasing rate and it's going to be very easy to find a replacement especially for something that's tier 12 and under. You're going to find replacements for that rather quickly and eventually you're going to find a good enough base with an exalted affix that you want and that's probably going to be the one that you replace and wear from that point on. Alright, and that's my video for the basics on crafting, how to craft, what is crafting, and just how the whole formula and instability is calculated, and just how to craft in general. As you can see, it's very, very simple. It's not a complex thing. You get to choose. It's very deterministic. And of course, there's always going to be a chance to break that item that you're working on. As always, stay safe, travelers, and have a good day.